What up, kids? Hey, we're ready to roll. I, I think we've got uh, three, count them, three. One, two, three, three stories today for you and me to dive into. It's gonna be awesome. Would you take a second, make sure you've got your colored pencils, your pens, your crayons, whatever you're gonna use to draw. And then would you also ask your parents permission to share this video? I'm gonna use three stories to help you see God's continual protection and provision for his people and his work through Moses, God's leader in Israel. And uh, it's, uh, it's going to be interesting to watch. So I hope you have your, your fingers ready. Get them ready. Can you get them ready with me? Get them loose. Get them loose. Maybe you got to get your shoulders loose too. I don't know how hard you're drawing when you're scribbling. I know sometimes you get right on that paper and you scribble down, but get those fingers ready. Get those arms stretched. Is it early morning for you? Because I feel really tired today. I don't know about you. Oh, look at that, that hole in my sleeve. Oh, man. You know that I got this shirt when I was in 10th grade, I think it was, and it's been great for me. I am not in 10th grade anymore. When I got this shirt, that was the only hole I had in it. That's still the only hole until this year. The elbows have started to wear through because I kind of have alligator elbows. If you don't know what that means, you'll know when you get older. All right, let's dive in. Hopefully you shared the video. I want to share the, to tell you three stories. Story number one, here's what it says. The whole Israelite community set out from the desert of sin. I just dropped my marker. Traveling to the place to place where the Lord commanded. And they camped at Rephidim, but there was no water there for the people to drink. So the, the people quarreled. They grumbled with Moses. They argued with him. Give us water to drink. And Moses replied, why do you quarrel with me? Why do you put the Lord to the test? Well, the people were thirsty for water and they grumbled against Moses. And they said, why did you bring us out of Egypt to make us, make our children and our livestock die of thirst? This is, we're seeing this again and again with the children of Israel. They got delivered from slavery. They complained in slavery. They got delivered by God because he heard them in their cries for mercy. And now they keep saying, oh, I wish we'd go back there. I wish it were better there. We, we, we had water at least. And then Moses cries to the Lord, what am I supposed to do with these people? They're almost ready to stone me. Okay, let's draw the children of Israel. We'll draw them today because there's going to be several stories here. All right, I'm not giving them legs for the sake of our time, all right? Moses is here in front of them. Moses has his staff. Moses has his beard. All right. You know, I never give the, them hair either. I'm not trying to look like Moses, but I just realized I only give these guys beards, don't I? Well, that's life. All right, I am giving them legs. I changed. You, they're walking around the desert. They need some legs, right? So the children of Israel, here they are. Hopefully you've drawn your crowd. This is a common picture nowadays because we have most of these stories involve all these people complaining to Moses. And what are they saying? They're saying, we're going to starve. Actually, we're going we're gonna to dehydrate. If we don't drink enough water, we've got a new complaint against God. And Moses says to the Lord, Lord, help me out here. These people, they are a pain, right? They're about to kill me. Now, I don't know. I don't know. Moses is saying, what do I do, Lord? And the Lord says, well, here's what I'm going to do. I want you to take... And I want you, look what it says, go out in front of the people, take some of the elders of Israel and take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile River and go and I will stand there before you with, at the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, the rock and water will come out of it for the people to drink. So Moses did this in the sight of the elders and he called the place Massa and Meribah. Now, we're going to put a rock here, okay? A big rock. Now. I don't know if you know anything about rocks, okay? I, this is like a big boulder. But usually water doesn't come out of rocks, right? Usually you, you could squeeze a rock. In fact, they challenge you today, kids. Take a walk, take a hike, and go and find a rock. And you squeeze it as hard as you can, and you will not get any water out of that rock. But God says, take it and then tell the people of Israel and 
show them, because here comes the water. God provides water flowing out of the rock for his people. Bloosh, 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 all right? Water for them to drink. And he names the place Meribah and Massah because that's where they were quarreling and it was where they were testing the Lord. The Israelites were testing the Lord, saying, is he really care for us? Think about that. The Israelites testing the Lord. He's the one that delivered them. He's the one that provided them food in the desert. He's the one that trampled over their enemies for them, brought them out of slavery. And they're saying, does the Lord care about us? Why has he brought us out here? That's story number one. There's going to be another enemy that tests them. And it says this, the Amalekites, that's a group of people, came and attacked the Israelites there. And Moses said to Joshua, choose some of your, our men and go fight the Amalekites. Tomorrow I will stand on top of the hill with the staff of God in my hands. So Joshua fought the Amalekites as Moses ordered. As long as Moses held his hands up, the Israelites were winning. And whenever, whenever he lowered his hands, the Amalekites were winning. So when Moses' hands grew tired, they took a stone and put it under him, and he sat on it. Aaron and Hur held his hands up on one side and on the other, so that his hands remained steady till sunset. So Joshua overcame the Amalekite army with a sword. All right? And this is, what, this is what happens, okay? So an army's coming. We're going to put the army over here. They're a bunch of bad guys, and we'll give them a new, a new – they're not going to be the same as the, as the um, pharaoh, but they're going to look similar. They got points, okay? And they come, and they're going to attack because they don't want Israel coming through their land, right? Hey, ah! Now, whenever Moses lifted up his hands, whenever his hand and the staff, whenever he had his staff up, the, the Israelites were winning. But, hey, I want you to do this. Put your hands up right now. Put your hands up. All right? Above your head. Okay? Above your head like this. Okay, good. For the rest of the study, don't let your hands down. Okay? Put your hands up. Unless you need to draw, but even if you don't, don't draw yet. Okay? I'm going to let you be there for a minute. Are your hands still up? Bring them out to the side a little bit, but keep them all above your head. Are your hands getting heavy yet? Do they feel heavier than they used to? Put them up. Keep them up. Don't drop them. I'm watching. Don't you drop them. My hands are starting to feel a little tired. You keep them up. I'm going to keep teaching. This is what happened to Moses. Moses was getting tired. Moses' arms were getting heavy. Maybe your hands are getting heavy. And Moses was feeling heavy. And so Aaron and Hur came and put a stone under Moses. They said, oh, sit here. All right? Keep your hands up. Don't drop them, kids. They said, oh, sit here. And then they also came alongside, and they lifted up Moses' hands, right? And God used this partly because Moses was the leader, right? Moses is the leader of Israel who God is helping to lead to deliver. And so they lifted up Moses' hands. And this is what's interesting is we see God provide powerfully through Moses. God provides in his miraculously through his leadership, but he also isn't strong enough himself. It's clearly not Moses who does all this work. Moses lifts up the staff of God and when Moses lowers his hands, they begin to lose. But Moses himself is weak. Moses needs God's help. Moses need, is not the one delivering Israel. He is the messenger of God's deliverance. And that's why we see in the third story that Moses, all right, this is story number one. Story number two is the soldiers and the Amalekites, all right? And story number three is the people have all kinds of questions for Moses. Okay, so let's turn this into a question. They say, hey, what's the price of tea in China? That is such an over your head. Sorry, kids, if your parents are watching, I don't know if some of them would even know that. But my grandfather used to always say that. Hey, what's the price of tea in China? So anyway, they would come to Moses. They'd say, I've got a question. We've got an argument. We need, to, we need your help, right? And Moses was standing there answering people's questions all day, every day. And he was getting tired of it. He was getting worn out. 
He wasn't able to give them answers to everything. And Moses' father-in-law, his wife's father, saw this going on. And he said, Moses, Moses, you're not strong enough to do this alone. You need help, just like you needed help with Aaron and her, just like you needed help, because this is, this is a big group of people that God has called you to lead. This is a big group of people with a lot of problems that you need to care for. And you need to lead, but you need to lead by giving to other people some responsibilities. And it's not good. You're going to get tired out. You're never going to be able to survive if you don't teach or if you don't give away some of the, the leadership responsibilities that you're carrying right now. And so Jethro tells Moses, hey, group the people up, break them up into, into smaller groups, and then appoint a judge or a leader in those groups. And so he said, okay, you're going to have, you're going to have a group of people here. And you guys do math, right? And you're going to have a group of people here, and then you're going to make this all one big group. Okay. And so there's a leader here and a leader here and a leader here and a leader over all of them. And you're going to break this group up, right? And do the same thing. And if the problem gets really bad, well, those people can all come to you still, Moses. But that way you won't get tired out and exhausted. God provides the people of Israel with water. He provides them with a win over his enemies. And he provides them with wisdom for their leadership. Those are the three W's of what God provides for the children of Israel in relationship to Moses in the wilderness. God provides water from a rock, a win over the Amalekites, and wisdom for leading the people, helping them see that only God can provide, that even as he's using his great servant Moses, he needs, Moses is not the true deliverer, and Moses needs other people to help him wisely lead and care for his people. Ultimately, only God can triumph over his enemies and love and lead his people, right? That's what the song Israel sung. Only God can be their king. Only God can triumph and put down the enemies and love and lead God's people. Are your hands still up? How many of you dropped your hands? You're probably tired by now and you understand why Moses needed help, right? Well, come back tomorrow. We'll keep thinking and keep learning from God's word.